Today, we are reintroducing the follow script. I have simplified it down a little bit further, and I have a firm grasp on the math behind it. Whoa! First thing to note is we have an ultra simple and with separation. The ultra simple follow script is going to follow to a T to the destination position. With separation is going to allow you to have some amount of separation from that. So what you just saw is the object stayed back from me. So for instance, if I come in here, staying back. And now if I move towards it, it actually moves back. It's trying to stay away from me. And if I move over here and I try to jump on it, it goes down. It's kind of timid actually. By saving a player ID, we are able to pull up that player ID to check for a destination position. If you didn't want to use a player's ID, you could use a different object. So you could have like an object's position. We then save a destination position throughout our script, so we're constantly updating this. Then we have the amount of time that it takes for the object to get to where it's going, and how often are we updating the object. You'll note that I have set it to be one-tenth of a second here, although if you're running multiple objects, I'd recommend making this a lot larger. And I think if the time is also slower, for instance, if you had it moving over 10 seconds, the update speed could easily be one or even two seconds without it making that big of a difference. When the player enters the world, we start by saving their player ID to the variable player ID. We then send event loop one to self over one second. You don't have to send this over a one second delay, but it's nice to have a delay, for instance, if you don't want them to be bombarded. <laughs> then we have the event loop one. And what we're gonna initially do is set the destination position to be the torso of the player ID. We then move to that destination position. And while technically you could move torso position down to here, but since we need to use the destination position twice in our script, it also shortens the script in a couple places. So it's nice to set it as a variable and then use it that way. We then move to that destination position over time on self, so that's a half second. We then rotate towards the look towards of the normalize of the destination position minus the position of self with a vector one over time on self. That looks like a mouthful, but let me help you understand what's happening here, because it's not too complicated. So the first thing you need to know is we're using rotate to. So we're planning to rotate the object self. Then we need to get a rotation. Well, we don't have a rotation. We have two vectors and a vector is a position. We have the position of the player and we have the position of self. But if we subtract the position that we're going to and the position of self, we will get the distance between those two objects and that's a vector because it has x, y, and z values to get that difference. If we normalize it, what normalize does is it brings it down into a zero to one scale, meaning it brings it down to a normal state that's easy to work with, but it's also a direction at that point. We've now taken it from being this large number that's the distance to being a small number between zero and one for x, y, and z, meaning it's a direction. Now having it as a direction can only be done by normalizing this. We then can look towards using that direction. And so what look towards does is it allows us to convert that vector into a rotation, but we need to give it this vector up of zero, one, zero, and this will give it a normal up. I can't completely explain why it has to be zero, one, zero, but trust me, it needs to be zero, one, zero, otherwise you get funky rotations. We then use our time of a half second and we run this on self. We then continue sending loop back to self with our update speed. And that is how we get an ultra simple follow. I just wanna take a quick moment to explain what normalize is doing. So what normalize is doing is it goes right back to trigonometry. So we have a unit circle here. And on a unit circle, the center point is zero, zero, zero. And then the outside is one meter. So this represents the unit circle. And so think of this point being the center where our object is originating. So wherever our object starts, and that's our destination out there. So this little cube here is our destination. And this line represents the length, the distance to get to that destination. So if we told this object to go there, it's gonna move along this line. But what we wanna get is the direction. We don't necessarily wanna to move to that object. To get a direction, we need to normalize this length down to the size and scale of a unit circle. So what it does is it scales it down uniformly to fit into the unit circle. And that's all that's happening when you convert the distance of a vector into a direction. It's simply scaling it uniformly to fit on the unit circle. So that way we can now rotate our object to face that object. 
Once again, we have player ID, destination position, time and update speed, but now we're adding in the vector variable direction and separation, a number variable. Now separation is gonna define how far away do we wanna keep the object from the player, and direction is gonna define what direction we're facing. And we used direction before, you'll remember it was in our, our rotate command, but now we've pulled it out just like we had pulled out destination position. Everything up here when the player enters the world is the same, and even our destination position is the same, but we've now added setting a direction, and you'll remember direction is created by normalizing destination position minus the position of the self. So this goes right back to that unit circle. And so now that we know which direction we wanna head, we come and reset destination position and we subtract the direction time separation. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that number between zero and one and it's gonna say, okay, this is how far away I want you to remain, but it needs to be in the direction from that object. And so by moving the destination position by subtracting the amount that we wanna stay separated using direction, we can now keep that object back relative to its current starting position. We then move to that destination position over time again, and then we rotate with the look towards of direction, since it's now the same as what we were using before, with the same up of 0, 1, 0 over time, and it just continues to loop. And that's how we add separation to our script. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye! I can't get away! Ah!